Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report. Trusted, timely, tradition. The unspoken truth about pests on U.S. Farm Report. Brought to you by AgriSure Traits. Combine the power of AgriSure Duracade plus AgriSure Viptera trait stacks to control 16 yield damaging above and below ground pests. Well, as drought and heat are taking a toll on crop conditions in some areas, some farmers are also battling pests. But what role does weather play each year when it comes to the amount of insects you see in fields? It's the unspoken truth about pests. Drought continues to plague farmers in the northern plains and northwest. We have several fields here that are in tough shape. With a record-setting heat forecast to continue next week. I'm projecting half, half a crop, half normal. Dry weather even producing this. Grasshoppers taking over Montana wheat fields, even showing up on the radar. Once they start flying, now, now they're mobile. And, and when you said something about the radar, that's exactly what happens. They become very mobile in a case like that. A problem Terry Onvik says he hasn't seen since the 1980s. They will reduce it significantly to the point where in some of them there will be no harvest. From grasshoppers to monster Japanese beetles, weather is playing a role in pest pressure this year. Weather is always very influential on pest pressure. A lot of pests, as far as even their emerging uh, time, is heat unit based. Farm Journal agronomists Ken Ferry and Missy Bauer both say it's the lack of rains early having an impact now. For us locally, we did not get heavy rains during the rootworm hatch. So there is a window of opportunity to drown rootworm if the soil is saturated right there at the hatch, we did not get that. So we're seeing a little bit more rootworm pressure from that uh, situation there. In Michigan, Mother Nature made a quick switch. My biggest concern is here we went from being extremely dry, basically we we're on the drought monitor, uh, s starting to show a lot of crop stress, and then we went 13 days of pretty much solid rain. Uh, big rains anywhere from 6 to 12 inches. She says that change in weather compounded crop stress. So now we went from being too dry to saturated soils and really losing a lot of nitrogen. So I think it's the added stress that's probably going to be our bigger determinant. So let's say now we do end up with some sort of insect pressure, but we've already had all these compounding stresses on top of it. So I'm more concerned about the just the added stress from it. And Ferry says more so than the issue of too dry or too wet, it's the heat and lack of heat that can often be a problem when it comes to pests. For insects, it's not always the dry or wet situation. We track insects by insect GDUs, so that becomes part of uh, their development, so we know when the actual uh, infestation is going to take place. The other major factor? winds. Other things that in the weather that affect insects is those that blow up from the south. So you're going to need southerly winds to bring in, for instance, our cutworm populations and maybe our southwestern corn borer, stuff like that. From wind direction to velocity of the gusts, it comes with increased pest pressure risks. Things like armyworm, black cutworm moths, those are all things that really blow up uh, in from the southern more areas into our area. And then once they get here, then we again goes back to heat unit based on when things actually hatch after the uh, eggs are laid from the moths. But this year... We haven't seen dramatic impacts of the weather on pest populations this year. University of Illinois Extension entomologist Nick Sider says weather hasn't played a major role in the eastern corn belt. Uh, spider mites are a great example of an, a pest that that leads to. When you have very wet weather, particularly when you have that at the long, wrong time or the right time, I guess, if you're trying to get rid of corn rootworm. From very wet to the issues from flooding. If you have flooding conditions, uh, when those eggs are hatching, you can have pretty dramatic negative impact on that population and reduce corn rootworm pressure. We haven't had either of those situations this year, but those are prime examples. As farmers and agronomists hit the fields to scout, agronomists and entomologists say there's one major misconception when it comes to weather's impact on insect populations that year. I think probably one of the big misconceptions is uh, the winter. People always say, oh, it was this type of winter or that type of winter, and that's going to influence my pest pressure. There might be a little bit of truth to some of that, but remember, so many of these pests do overwinter in other places, get blown in with the moths and the wind currents. It's a misconception from Michigan to Ohio. The thing that I get asked every time we have a cold winter is, will the cold winter affect the insect populations? Will there be fewer insects? And I'm always very sad to tell people, no, not really. I, I do get this question a lot, but the fact is insects are very well adapted 
to live in the climates where they occur, even the extremes of those climates. As the University of Illinois Extension entomologists say, it's also a misconception that ripples through fields in Illinois. Most of the insects that we deal with regularly in Illinois, particularly things like corn rootworm, things like Japanese beetle, things like bean leaf beetle, they're pretty well adapted to an Illinois winter. Ferry says farmers also think a change in weather overnight can cause new pest problems to pop up. So two dry days doesn't create, for instance, an aphid or spider mite issue, and two wet days doesn't create um, a disease issue in the corn. Instead, he says by the time farmers notice heavy infestation issues, it's probably been a problem for weeks. And we have to look at most time we're looking at two to three week weather patterns uh, that set us up. So it's not as uh, as quick as some people want to believe. We'll be covering this topic over the next few weeks, but you can also see more truths about pests on AgWeb. That's go.farmjournal.com slash pests. All right, up next, how is weather impacting the soybean and cotton crops across the U.S.? Our roundtables are next.